All right, well, let's get started. All right, you ready? No, let's do this. We're shooting from the shooting from the hip on this one. Don't we always do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we always do. That's right. Well, welcome to the 95 by Christoa Ministries. Uh, to today's topic, non-submission or, or the non-submission mentality. Uh, the idea that we are the masters of our own souls. Uh, before we jump into this topic, let me tell you a little bit about Christ Oil Ministries, what we do. Uh, we support pastors around the world. We provide free resources to Christians uh, for spiritual growth, renewal. Uh, we provide those resources on our website, www.christoa.com. Please head over there and check that out. Uh, brother, what do you think about uh non-submission or i mean what is non-submission <laughs> well, it's basically the opposite of submission <laughs> what <laughs> yes all right that's the show right there see you next time uh, yeah, yeah the the opposite of submission um submission has kind of become like a really kind of like a four-letter word uh it's mm-hmm especially when you start talking about the marital r- relationship, um, mm-hmm. our current society uh, has vilified those who claim to be complementarian, uh, which is mostly uh, conservative uh, evangelicals. Uh, those in the reformed church, we are complementary, complementarian in our, in our doctrine, especially relating to the household, relating to marriage. Uh, we believe that uh, Christ is, Um, submissive to the father. He teaches that he doesn't do his own will, but the will of the father. And so we teach that the wife is submissive to the husband. We witness a general non-submission attitude uh, as people are relating to the government. Um, No, we're not going to submit to the government. No, we're not going to let, no, we're going to stand up. And this is the normative way people seem to think about the government. Um, And really any authority that's placed over them, uh, even the authority of the church, nope, non-submission, we don't submit to anybody. And that just seems to be the the normative attitude that people have, especially in America, toward anything and everything. Um, Is is that a healthy tendency or or not? Is non-submissiveness healthy um, or or not? What do you think, bro? I don't don't know. I don't think it's not healthy at all. It's... um... Because if you look at through scripture, scripture tells us always to submit, namely to whether it's to God, to one another, mm. wives to husbands, to government, all that. But um, you know, because you know, I think what happened, I think we gotta get the whole idea that well, we're bound. we you know, I, I remember I used to watch cops for the longest time, mm-hmm. and I always, always love the Christians who get on there and say, well. I'm a Christian, so I don't have to follow your, I don't have to follow man's laws no more. I can follow God's laws. That's like you it's funny how most of the time they have no idea what they're saying. Yeah, I know. It's like, yeah, you the haven't been reading the Bible, have you? The things that they are insisting on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, I think because even I remember hearing him, because I'm in Ephesians 5 right now. Mm-hmm. And he's talking about being imitators of God. And, you know, he said, always give thanks to for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to God, even the Father, and being subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Then he immediately goes, wives, be subject to your own husbands as yeah. to the Lord. So, and then Romans 13, you know, be subject to the government. Um, and then scripture always clearly teaches. Oh, wait, 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 wait. The Bible doesn't mean that. <laughs> Yes, it does. <laughs> Subject to the government. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, now people will like to say. I remember I was, I was one time I was talking to a girl, and she was a, a liberal, mm. and I was a, I'm a conservative, and she was talking about how and she just had this she had this disdain for the president at that time. Yeah, and she was saying about how you know we need to rise up and overthrow this tyrant and all this. Right. Said, well, what about Romans 13, though? Mm-hmm. You know, be subject to the government and all this and that. And she's like, yeah, but unless they're evil, I go, where in the scripture does it say that? Right. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't. In fact, Paul is in prison while he is writing that. Yeah, he's, yeah. And, uh, yeah. 
Rome, think, Rome is the definition of evil when Paul wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Paul, Romans is Paul's magnum opus. It's like his, he knows what he's writing. This is his, this, this Romans, Romans was his dissertation. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's a heck of a dissertation too. <laughs> My dissertation is probably not going to be as good as the book of Romans. I, I dare find anyone's <laughs> dissertation that won't be around the Romans. Uh, I my my dissertation is not um, verbal plenary inspired by God. That's a, <laughs> so, no Romans is so is that, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, because we have the idea of like let's look at marriage for example. I'm not married. I'm not, I only have a girlfriend anymore. Right. You're married, so you can probably answer this better than I can. But, you know, is it bad that women should not submit to men? Or is it bad that women should submit to men? Uh, that all depends on how you define submission, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we're talking about a very worldly, a worldly form of submission which is basically tetramount to letting somebody walk all over you right then no submission is not okay in any in any way shape or form um if we're if we're applying worldly definition to the faith then we have a problem so we have to think about the godly the biblical definition of submission so if christ is co-equal and co-eternal with the father right uh, two members of the Godhead, uh, one essence, different persons, yet he submits to the Father, then this submission uh, does not lessen Jesus's worth, uh, doesn't lessen Jesus's equality with God in any way. Um, instead, his submission looks something like, I'm, I'm here to do the will of the Father. Right? He's, he's not the one He's not the one um, doing things selfishly. So there's a, there's a godly submission that Christ has to the Father such that Christ is, is honoring the Father's will, and, and he is simply taking it upon himself to reveal the Father, which is, is really kind of, it's, it's interesting for us to try to wrap our minds around that because they're one, right? Um, but different persons. Uh, I'm, I, I plan on writing a, a paper about that. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. Is that, you know? Yeah, uh, actually, actually, there's a book out there by one of my former professors. Yeah, JJ Rowley called Eternal Submission. Yeah, um, the eternal submission, and um, I think the the formal name for the doctrine is uh, ESS. Uh, eternal subordination of the son to the father. Yep. Um, that is the, that is the name for the formal name for the doctrine. And some people get real heretical with that real quickly. Uh, Cause it almost turns into a form of Arianism, uh, mm -hmm. which is, which is heresy. Um, mm -hmm. Son proceeds from the father. He's submitted to the father. He's subordinate to the father. Therefore he must've been created by the father uh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't read the book. It's all my yeah. book to read list, but That's, I, 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 I do trust my professor yeah, handle yeah. this paper or book. Yeah, yeah. And then, Boston. yeah, and then some people like when it comes to ESS, they they don't quite go that far with it, but the just the word subordination makes it sound like that. So I, I don't like the word subordination. <sighs> Um, but there is, I mean, there is something to be said from scripture. Uh, there are people on the other side of the ESS debate. They're like, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really with the critics on this one, but I, I do see that Christ does the will of the father. Uh, that is his role in the person of the Godhead that, that he is submitted to the father, uh, at the bare minimum in his incarnation, but probably eternally as well, you know, um, so yeah, it's interesting. Um, non-submission, not even non-submission, isn't even a, a thing in within the Godhead, within the Trinity, as God relates to Himself. 
why would we think that we have the right to loose ourselves from any bonds whatsoever? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, um, well, I think the answer to that, the answer to that critics, I think, yeah, Jesus did do the father's will. He has what he always talked about when he's on earth. He says, Hey, I'm here to do the will of the father. If you see me, see the father, I know all there are one. Yeah. So on and so forth. But, it, John 1 answers that question, answers that critic on the whole G Jesus was created. Right. And then Philippians 2 answers that in the sense of that, well, yes, Jesus did submit to the Father's will, but it's going to be Jesus who is also give praise from the Father. Mm -hmm. He, are, are we Philippians 2, 9 through 11? For this reason, also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are on heaven, on earth, and on the earth. And that every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord, the glory of God the Father. Mm. So, um, you know, I think people who don't, who, who don't understand that probably just don't want to understand that. Because as guys think, you're kind of getting involved in all the whole Trinity debate. Uh, yep. Um, you know, which is, which is fun. Yeah. A quote I love by Steve Lawson is this. Understand the Trinity, you'll lose your mind. Uh, <laughs> yes. Deny the Trinity, you'll lose your soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because the Trinity, yes, it's one of those words that's not in the Bible, but you see it throughout Scripture. Yeah, it's, it's better to say, I don't know, and I don't fully understand it, than to... Flat out say, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah than, than to just reject something based on the fact that we can't wrap our minds around it. There are plenty of things I, I imagine we can't wrap our minds around that we wouldn't immediately say, nah, I reject that. No. Uh, in order to reject something, you should, you should try to at least prove it false. <laughs> you know? Well, it's, that's kind of funny because that's how I became a covenant theologian. <laughs> uh -huh. yep. I was studying dispensationalism at Calvary and I was just like, yeah, I don't agree with this. <laughs> People don't realize that uh, dispensationalism is a is a biblical theology, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's people don't even realize that anymore. They just say, "Yeah, I'm dispensational," or they don't even they don't even say, "Yeah, I'm dispensational." They just hold the dispensational beliefs and have no idea where those beliefs come from, which is interesting. Uh, or you go Stephen Anderson approach and say, "I'm not this because that word's not in the Bible." Hey, yeah, well, neither is uh, Fundamental Baptist, so... No, that's not, <laughs> so, not, not, neither is King James. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, uh, right. That, that, that's not an episode, though. Yeah, uh, yeah covenant theology is super cool. Uh, we're going to... I'm going to start doing um, biblical covenant theology after we finish Revelation. I'm going to take uh, 11 weeks, I think, present a basic uh, biblical covenant theology. Nice. And then we're going to build from that into systematic theology because we have some people here who aren't coming to men's group who they just, they're just like, hey, we really want to do systematic theology. Can we work that in sometime? Uh, not immediately because we don't want to add another evening meeting, but, uh, but we can do it after we finish Revelation. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool, man. I wish yeah. I was there to go through that with y'all. Mm, you could be. That's <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So liberty, um, liberty becomes an idol for many, 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 many people. Um, I am very conservative. Uh, I like my freedoms in the United States. I want that to be known up front. Uh, I enjoy uh, being able to keep and bear arms. Uh, I enjoy the uh, freedom of speech that I have, that I can say pretty much anything I want and not have the police come and jail me because I'm saying something. I, I enjoy my liberty. Um, liberty is good, but I want to, uh, I want to propose that liberty is a better slave than a master. I think liberty can be oppressive. Um, I think uh, when liberty becomes our idol, when that's the one thing we are striving for is liberty above all else, and that's our God, 
it leads to hyper individualism and anarchy and the worship of self, which causes us, uh, especially in the church, to promote things like free will. And then everything that we do, we have to try to defend free will. And we end up twisting the scriptures in order to do that because we're more concerned about liberty than we are about submission to God and the church and the yeah. people and our brothers and sisters. So liberty is good, but I propose it is a better slave than master. Um, it was Nelson Mandela who said, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Um, and that just suggests that, um, we don't submit to anything. We are our own masters. Uh, but the reality is uh, we cannot be our own masters. Uh, granted, there are things we should not submit ourselves to. Um, but non-submission as a lifestyle is idolatrous. Um, yeah. you, you have any responses to, to what I've said there, brother, before I jump into the, uh, the logical problems of non-submission? Well, in the words of Trump, on Dundilla, wrong. Wrong. <laughs> um, I think in Romans 6, where Paul thinks, Paul's saying, you're either a slave to God or you're a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no in-betweens, either one or the other. Yeah. But I think too many Christians today think, well, I don't, I don't, like, that, I don't like that term slave because I agree that there, there is a history of slave slavery. Yeah. This country has been bad, especially in the United States. Yes, like, yeah, I will especially. admit, yes, and that is some limitations. Yeah, yeah, but Paul is not using that term the way we we the way we did. God is not some angry, you know, libertarian guy. <laughs> why do you know? wait? Why do you create equate angry and libertarian? That's first words came in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Right. He's not some. Uh, he's not some guy who has who has problems as a slave. I, he, I feel. I feel. I am uh, closer to the the libertarians than I am to the Republicans right now. But I. But I can't go as far as the libertarians do. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll this. God is not a human. Okay, let me put yeah. it that way. He is loving. He's caring. He takes care of his of his slaves. Or is he do it? He takes care of his children. He takes care of his own, his sheep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I did a whole study on this on my very first episode on Romans. Uh, so if you want to go, but you want to listen to that, feel free to listen to that. Yeah, go listen to it. It's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. And by the way, the next episode will be out pretty soon. Don't worry. Just yes. every tomorrow. Every day, every day I look at my podcast and see if it's up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got all of Romans, all of the Romans to last verse 20 last verse chapter two done yeah so i just gotta record them all <laughs> yeah but but yeah god is not some man he's not so he's not one of us who's bound by sin and we think like sin and all that he is holy loving just god mm -hmm. who you know he keeps us not as captives but as children let me use that in a sermon title. Sounds good. That is good. Um, I feel like I should make a clarification because somebody's going to listen to this podcast and be like, what? Andrew is, he's, he's, he's talking about, uh, what is it? Uh, theology. It's libertarian theology, uh, but there's a, a particular name for it. Uh yeah, I don't remember the particular name for it, but uh, I I meant the libertarian political party, not not libertarian theology, because libertarian theology is is all about someone's ability and be like a free will Baptist um, or Church of Christ, or yeah, Church of Christ, or uh, it's all about I have the ability to come to Christ, and that no, I do not believe. That have the ability to come to Christ. I do not believe God is the most moved mover. Uh, I I am a not an open theist. I'm very much a closed theist. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I felt like I should make that clarification since I used the word libertarian earlier. <laughs> yeah. All right. The uh, the logical problems with uh, 
non-submission mentality. Uh, first of all, um, there is a an essential interdependence on earth. Um, so uh, I cannot live if there are no plants and animals on the earth. Um, plain and simple. I, I depend on them. Uh, there's no independence involved. I, I depend on plants and animals to live. Uh, otherwise, the earth doesn't produce fruit and I, I can't eat and I starve and I die. Uh, so, I, so I need plants and animals. There's interdependence there. Um, only God is truly independent. It can only be said of God that he doesn't need anyone else. Uh, so there's only one being who has the right to not submit to anything else. And that is, that is God, right? The Godhead. Uh, he doesn't depend on anything else. Uh, we are part of creation. We are part of the ecosystem. So we depend on the other parts of creation. The other parts of creation depend on, on us. Uh, Non-submission doesn't respect that at all. Uh, we are also part of the culture. Everything that we say and do, um, even this podcast, uh, it, it affects everything else. Uh, everything is connected. Uh, so um, if, if we don't respect that and we take a non-submission attitude and what I do only applies to me, myself, and I, I uh, control my life, um, we're going to end up spending a, a, quite a few things into, into chaos, right? Um, and, and individualistic culture is uh, an oxymoron. You, you, you don't have individualistic people and culture Yet there's always there's always a culture, right? And so a culture of individualism doesn't actually make sense. Uh, individualism as a way of life uh, and as a and as a way of thought and uh, and as a way of heart, uh, it it is actually impossible. Uh, you wonder why the people who are individualistic in their life philosophy. Um, you, you can't actually live that way. Uh, it's a it's a pipe dream um, that is idolatrous because only God is independent. Only God can be individualistic. Yet He chooses not to. Right? He yeah. Not to be that way. He's a community in Himself, and that's why we are a community, and we depend on Him, and we depend on one another. And so this this idea of non submission, basically, what it does is it we elevate ourselves above all of our peers and we say i am the most important person to me um and and basically it causes us to walk on everybody else um and that's just it's like the opposite of what it means to love others that's the opposite of what it means to to really be part of the the human race um it's it's dangerous that's what it is it's dangerous yeah i agree i i, I agree i agree Mufasa. Um, <laughs> what? what are you talking about the whole nature I think you got me thinking of the circle of life from circle Lion King of life. yeah that's what I got thinking of <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that song as the intro to this episode you do that, that one would, <laughs> you know but you know I think submission you know like is even in our presentation of the gospel that's how it has to be mm-hmm because you know, a lot of these days it's a hey, God loves you, has a wonderful plan for you. Let me heal you real quick, and boom. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't talk about what it actually means to be a child of God. Yeah. It requires submission mm-hmm. to say, you know what, I'm already, I'm, like, I'm no longer t- taking my life. You know, it's like you know, like Bon Jovi once said, "It's my life," mm-hmm. but. It's not true. It's it's not it's not our life. It's God's life yeah. uh, for us. Because even James will say, uh, "Submit therefore to God and resist the devil; he will flee from you." Mm-hmm. When we submit to God and resist the devil, that makes it better for us. Yeah, because you're either you because I remember, I remember reading by John MacArthur the Gospel Point of Jesus, which one was probably my favorite the- theology book. I've ever read. Mm-hmm. He said this: When we get to heaven, we're not going, and we see Jesus, we're not going to be like, "Hey, what's up, Jesus? How you been?" 
<laughs> no, we're going to be on our hands and knees giving him praise saying Jesus is Lord. Either we say that now on earth or we're going to say it up in heaven and it'll be too late. Because yeah. that's who he is. And that's what Romans is all about is getting the gospel right. Especially yeah. chapters one. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Uh, I want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 9 here. Um, made a good point, by the way, uh, the whole circle of life thing, and then applying it to like Christ. Um, really, this is meant to reveal Christ and who Christ is. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting in verse 14, all right, all the way to verse 27. So also the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. But I have used none of these things, and I am not writing these things so that it will be done so in my case. For it would be better for me to die than to have any man make my boast an empty one. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for I am under compulsion for woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this voluntarily, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have a stewardship entrusted to me. What then is my reward? That when I preach the gospel, I may offer the gospel without charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all. There is this liberty, and Christian liberty is just this. It's not, it's not antinomianism, like the law does not become void because we are free in Christ. It doesn't mean, okay, you in Christ, go do whatever you want to do. No, uh, God actually changes our hearts. We, we gain liberty from the expectations of, of people, from worldly religion, right? That's what Paul is getting at here. Like, he doesn't want to be paid by the church at Corinth because he doesn't want the, the church at Corinth telling him how to do his ministry. It's an unhealthy church. So he's, I'm free from all men. I don't have to worry about what you think. I don't have to, I don't have to fit into your expectations or your categories. I don't have to worry about that. But I make myself a slave to all. And that's what, that's what Christian liberty does. Like if we are free in Christ, if we have liberty in Christ, that's, we are free then to make ourselves slaves to all people, to, to give ourselves over to people unconditionally, right? So that I may win more, Paul says. To the Jews, I became as a Jew, so that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, though not being myself under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law, to those who are without the law, as without the law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so I might win those who are without the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I may by all means save some." I do all things for the sake of the gospel so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. We become a fellow partaker in the gospel when what? When we become slaves to our fellow people for the sake of winning them to the gospel. Uh, if, we, if, we, if we are not slaves to our fellow man for the sake of their coming to the gospel of Christ, the indication there, like if we just reverse the equation here, the indication there is that we are not ourselves partakers of the gospel. I'll quote, I'll quote my good friend, Charles Spurgeon. Actually, I, I don't know Charles Spurgeon at all. I haven't had the chance to talk with him, but it's going to be cool when I do. Uh, he, is, mm -hmm. he is my brother in Christ. Right. You know, preceded us. Oh, since I'm quoting Spurgeon, and since we're on, since we're on video this time, I've got to get my little Spurgeon bobblehead. So I'm quoting Spurgeon, got my Spurgeon bobblehead, and Spurgeon. Oh my God, Zilla. Yeah, Spurgeon said crazy things like, someone who claims to be a Christian, this isn't exact wording, so you can go look it up. If anyone claims to be a Christian, he is either a missionary or an imposter. Mm -hmm. And that's that's it. Um, it's it's all about dual loss, being a slave to our fellow man. A mutual submission 
uh, among among all people, um, starting with the church of God, like God calls us to be slaves to our 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 fellow man for the sake of winning them to the gospel. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. What control, self-control, um, exercise, uh, work out the faith? Uh, this isn't the kind of Christianity people really love, is it? <laughs> Not people of the world anyway. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim, I box in such a way as not beating the air, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. So I make myself a slave to others and I practice self-control. I make my body a slave to my mind so that I can serve others, give myself over to others unconditionally. Uh, and that applies to everything from just taking care of our bodies, right? Getting the exercise we need so that we can, so that we have the energy to do ministry and to serve others, to managing our time well, uh, denying ourselves and many of those things that we would just revel in. Like God calls us to be slaves, um, he, he does not call us to, to live like people who rule the world. He calls us to be slaves to one another and to humanity for the sake of the gospel. Every Christian really is a missionary or an imposter. Yeah, I, I've said that in my podcast a few times. Now, I don't think he's talking about going to Antarctica and living there and preaching the gospel there, well, although that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, or he, he's, not talking, no, he's not talking about going to Africa, trying to find some lost tribe we never heard of the priest gospel. Well, if you're called to that, go ahead because we need them. And they talking about going across your street to your neighbor and say, "Hey, do you know Jesus Christ?" That's it. Yeah, that's it's, what it means. Yeah. Also, I know a lot of secret sensitive churches like to use this first. These, especially 1923, as a slogan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, hey, Paul did whatever he he could to get people to come to church. Nope. No. Not, not like that. Not like that. No, he didn't build. No, Paul didn't use a giant starship to get draw people in. No, no, he, he preached doesn't. the gospel. He preached the gospel to get people in. Yeah, it doesn't say he he did. He he became an entertainer to attract people. That's not what the text says. It says he he became all things to all people. Yeah, which means for the homeless people, he became homeless. Mm -hmm. That's something quite different, right? Yes. Uh, for those for those who are who are rich, he related to them. He, he dressed in a way that was respectable to them. You know, he, he did that. Um, he he wasn't an entertainer. He was real. Uh, he wasn't wearing some mask to attract people. That's right. It's kind of messed up. It is. But you know, uh, it's okay if I read a verse real quick. It yeah, just kind of came caught in my head. Do please do. Because it kind of kind of goes along with, with this whole idea of submission. We'll start in verse 8. This is Romans 10. I'll read 8 through 13. But what does it say? The word is near is the word is the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with that mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him would not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever call, will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, don't want to be called, we profess Jesus as, as Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, not as a homeboy, not as our best friend, our Lord. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And um, now Jesus is a friend to sinners. He is. But he realize, is. realize that's an act of grace, y'all. That's yeah. condescension on Jesus' part. He's yeah. condescending to us, emptying himself. Uh, he doesn't yeah. have to do that. He's our friend, but, but man, that that 
He's our Lord first. It, it creates a sense of awe, not a, mm-hmm. not a, hey, Jesus, let's just hang out. And, no, no, no uh, he's, um, yeah. You know, I love the picture that when we get crown, our, our, our crowns of glory, our crowns of life, we just get right back to him because he's the only one who deserves to wear them, not us. Yeah. So. For show. So scripture instructs us to live like slaves so that we might partake in the gospel. Uh, evangelism, which necessitates service, actually indicates our participation in Christ through the gospel. And if we are not a evangelists and servants of others in community, um, we have not partaken of the gospel of Jesus Christ, or we are on the highway to hell. That's the indication there. So be so be very careful. The the idol of liberty will lead you to hell. Um, non-submission will lead you to hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the best advice I could give to our listeners or the best plea I can make is if you believe yourself to be in Christ, if Christ has called you, please plug into a local church. If there is not a local church in your area, plant one um, because we need to submit ourselves to the fellowship of believers. Pastors, stop domineering over your congregations. Uh, you are also submitted to the fellowship of, of believers. We need that. All of us need that. Um, that's, that's a matter of sanctification for us. Um, it's a matter of serving our brothers and sisters in the faith. Um, if, we, if we say to ourselves, I don't need to be in church to be a Christian and I don't, I can love Jesus and not be part of the church. Uh, false wrong. Um, it scripture clearly indicates otherwise, like we are, we are slaves and Liberty is perhaps one of the greatest idols of our day. I like Liberty. I like it a lot, but it is a better slave than master. Yes. Amen. All right, bro. Anything else before we close out the episode? No, I think we got involved. I think we did. Sweet. Uh, Well, listeners, thank you so much for joining us. uh, This episode of the 95 by Christoa Ministries. Uh, Be sure to check out the website for your free resources. Check out our missions projects. The things that we are doing is at www.christoa.com. Uh, we are currently uh, trying to reach our $50,000 milestone to uh, open up ministry office in Wilcox, Arizona. So we, we ask you to, to give for that purpose. Go check that out on our website. Um, and then we're working on some other resources uh, that we'll announce soon to come. Uh, brother, would you like to share the information about your other podcast? Yes, it's called Truth For You. We're walking through the Book of Romans. Um... We, we will, these next couple episodes are really going to really may hit some people hard. So I know it hit me hard. So I hope it does the same for you guys too. And uh, yeah. We, yep. Thanks for listening. We will catch you next time.